Audi. So, this is my 1999 Harley Sportster 883. It is carbureted. That's my newer bike. Uh, Breakouts, Milwaukee 8. This one's carbureted. I have a velocity stack on it. That's probably not good for the uh, piston rings, but uh, pretty much the idea for today is I'm going to put a hammer 1250 kit into it. Um, the bike's running well. It has tons of gas in it, which is kind of uh, not so great for taking the tank off, but uh, the bike runs fine. I mean, the oil's in there pretty good. I came through here and sort of put new tires on it and got it cleaned up and ready to go. I guess I could start it. It's proof. I put a lithium battery in it. Let me see if I'm in gear. Foist. That way it doesn't take off on me. Excuse the camera work. I was going to get my GoPro and uh, and use that. I believe if it lunges forward, we should be okay. Okay. So we need to hold, hit the ch choke here. If I can find it to hold the choke out, hit the start button. Excuse the camera. Work. Oh, you got to turn the fuel on as well. So promise me. <laughs> This does work. Okay, so that's off, down is on, forward is reserve, obviously. So the fuel is going into the carb, hold the choke, and uh, get in there. But it runs, and you can kind of get a little bit of how it sounds there. And hopefully it'll sound a little bit different whenever I get the uh, kit on there. I think uh, get some fresh air a little bit. But uh, supposedly adding the 1250 kit with the higher compression will give it a little more of a pop. Uh, higher frequency noise versus a lower rumble. But we'll see, hopefully it sounds better. I might hate it, it's kind of loud as it is because these are drag pipes on this thing, uh, which is good for performance, but noise uh, gets to your ears after a while, if that makes sense. And that, my other bike, it has a uh, Reinhardt's on there. And I think the cats are actually in the, in the slip-on, so I'm not sure if that's, so it's essentially a straight pipe too, and that's pretty loud as well. And I'm tempted to do the 131 on this bike, but price to uh, benefit ratio, I mean, it's awesome, but it's really expensive too. I think it costs probably as much as this entire bike here does. So I'm not too sure if the value proposition is there yet, but maybe I can get a good deal on it, do some haggling at some dealers, that sort of thing. But, okay, so the bike runs. It has an Ultima ignition module in it. Uh, supposedly those aren't good, and I think I have it on curve one. Uh, I think curve four is the least aggressive in terms of advance. So I might have to change that or switch to a Dyna, or uh, I think there's another one called Twin, twin Tech or Twin Something, uh, which is more of a high-end ignition module uh, to prevent uh, Igniting too soon. So if you got too much advance, you'll get some pinging from the cylinders, but you can manually time these by twisting the uh, ignition module to the left or to the right. But I'm hoping with curve four, it won't ping. And if it does ping, maybe backing it off a little bit, but uh, I don't want to wreck new pistons, that sort of thing. But, uh, but today is just going to be disassembling. So I'll drain the fuel out take the carb off, take the exhaust off. Hopefully nothing got too hot from running it there, but it's cold today, so good winter, winter Thursday night project. But uh, drain the tank, pull the tank, 
take the carb off, take the exhaust off, take the rocker box covers, cylinder heads, and uh, the cylinders themselves. And uh, I don't have the new kit yet, it's in the mail, but uh, once it comes, it'll be pre-assembled where the pistons are in the cylinders and I just have to add the wrist pins and the, put some circlips on, so it should be easy. So I figure, you know, do what I can today and then when I have time later, I can uh, finish it up. That way, you know, it's a little less trouble when I get the parts. But the hard parts will be uh, removing the cylinder heads. You gotta move the back wheel to take pressure off the cylinder head springs on the rockers. So the rockers are on the uh, uh, push rods and they have a spring on there and they control the valves. So that'll have spring pressure on there. So you rotate the wheel to get each piston to top dead center, which will remove pressure from the uh, lifter in the spring so you can pull off the head uh, without having pressure on there. And you also have to be kind of careful since everything's aluminum heads here. Uh, you can warp them so you kind of uh, take off the cylinder head bolts one uh, eighth of a turn or 45 degrees at a time uh, to prevent sort of loosening one side more than the other sides, that sort of thing. But, uh, but yeah, so the hard parts in total will be moving the back wheel to get it in the top dead center and uh, just torquing things. You gotta slowly torque the cylinders and heads on and uh, slowly take them off. That way you don't uh, warp the head and you get you know good uh, sealing with your uh, gaskets, that sort of thing. But uh, there's two schools of thought. I think one from the Harley manual, it says tighten them up to certain torque specs and go 90 degrees more and then loosen them off and then do it again. And supposedly the first time will help the gasket set in the correct position. And then the second time will tighten it up. But Cometic gaskets, they make gaskets. So they say, no, you don't have to do that. You just have to tighten, you know, I think it's at like nine foot pounds and then, you know, 20 foot pounds and like 40 foot pounds, whatever the torque specs are. And you do it just once, which from my perspective sounds nicer. Uh, less trouble. You don't have to do 90 degrees and you don't have to uh, loosen them and do it again. So I'm going to go with the Cometic gasket method uh, when I get there. But again, today I'm just going to be taking off the tank. So normally I got a straw from Six Flags that I set on my petcock here to uh, just disconnect this, put the straw there and put it into my gas tank, but I don't have my straw today. But I do have a filter here, so I'm just gonna loosen this top hose clamp off, unscrew my filter, and drain it from there. And uh, once it's empty, I'll pull the tank, pull the stroke spark plugs, pull the carb, and uh, get it to cylinder heads exposed. And uh, I guess the coil's kinda up in here. I'm not sure if I can see it, so it's kinda right there that the spark plugs go up to. So he'll probably have to come off with the ignition switch and all that sort of thing. But for now, I'm gonna drain the tank and uh, pull it off and we'll catch up then. There's just two bolts on mine. So there's a bolt here, a bolt on the other side. And on the back side, there's some rubber grommets that it just sort of hooks onto. Uh, but it's easier with the tank empty. So I'm gonna drain it first, even though the gas is is good in there and it's in working order which is nice with the carb bike uh gas tends to not last too long it's got a vented cap so the vented cap exposes the gas to air and it absorbs water slowly and uh you know like when i was first starting it i had to hold the choke and let it turn over a bit before i could uh actually get it started but it's running things are in good working order as it is which should be good. I don't want to have to have trouble starting it with new cylinders on there, uh, doing heat cycles, that sort of thing. But uh, step one is to remove the petcock uh, 
well, not the petcock, but remove the gas uh, from the petcock here. So I'll do that here in a second. I guess I could film everything and just edit. I was gonna stop. I'm not sure how much I was gonna get my GoPro, which has tons of storage space, whereas this one does not. Uh, so I got different classes of screwdrivers. I got cheapos. And this is my Klein ones, which should be on the bottom. One of these bottom drawers. I'll get a flathead as well. And then I have Craftsman on the side, which is probably too many screwdrivers, but you buy the Harbor Freight ones and then you figure out, oh, those are pieces of junk and strip out screws. So uh, you uh, switch relatively quickly. So I need a gas cam. Looks like it is a flathead. Let's grab a gas cam. It's got four. Also, this little hose that goes from the left side of the tank to the right side of the tank. Uh, there's two little nipples on there, uh, hose clamp. When I pull that off, that'll definitely drop gas, so I'll do it here and try to drain from here as well. But I already got the bolts off from that side and this side. tank is off. The carb has these two head breather bolts that holds it on. The choke lever, there's a fuel line coming in down there. You can see the hose clamp on the back. There's a vacuum line. Uh, it just spit, sits on the spigot there. There's a three quarters focus. Three quarters. Just gonna do it like this, and do a little bit of persuasion. Oh, can you wiggle down the lever? There we go. Carb side, got the choke like that. It's got a loose on this side on the back. Loosen him as well. Lefty Lucy. Um, you know, this guy usually be enough. There we go. So he's off. Right, so now he's loose. Uh, throttle cables, yeah. Okay, yeah. So these guys come loose. And that'll get you. The throttle cables loose over here. Oh. There's a spring inside there, but he's out. All right, so these guys come finger loose.
this sign and this carb. I'm pushing through. It's loose. A vacuum hose right there. But yeah, that's pretty much it. So, uh, let's get it. See here, the little cables just kind of spin into there. Oh, so the little cables come loose. There's a little spring on one, there's the intake that it sits on. Uh, the VOES vacuum hose it goes to this gizmo, if you can see that, and uh. That's about it. So there's a carb down there. Spark plug. I can get it. Spark plug. Spark plug. There's coil. Coil. And a spark plug. And under here. I can see it. There's also a spark plug boot. There we go. And a spark plug out. And spark plug out. Still need to drain the oil, but uh, let's disconnect handlebars. So, handlebar plug. Plugs, right handlebar plug goes all the way up to here. Boarding, so he's unplugged here and dangling way over there. Uh, throttle cables kind of push out there, but I'll kind of leave them in place. So it's really the coil here. He's got a screw there. I think he just comes loose on this back side. See that? Get the boots. The boots off. On this side, we've got to unscrew. Put the screw back on so I don't lose it. And that comes from the ignition module to tell it when to spark. I guess there's a, one more wire on the other side under a nut. To be over here. I think that guy's just pressed up in there. So he'll come out eventually. So I've got two. I'm not sure if you can see that. Washer, two washers, and the actual cable. I think those two washers are there just to keep that from shaking. Factory, we just had two boots. Okay, so that's loose. So now the only thing left is the bolts for the coil. Loose. Oh, there's a nut on the back 
side. Put these out from that side. Ignition. Ignition's going in there. He's got some wires, but the coil's free. Uh, yeah, I can take these these bolts out, I guess. Off. Key is loose. The wire I was trying to pull out earlier and theoretically finally come out. Or no, that's where it branches right there. So he's kind of zip tied or in the frame there. But these guys are loose. Yeah, so I think that's about it. I guess I can take off this bracket here. And there's a bracket on the front. So let's let's do that. So Got a five sixteenths for that bolt, that bolt, and those bolts. Put it on there. All right, tidy lefty loosey. I'm gonna tighten actually, I think. I don't know. Oh, that's loose. The joys of a vibrating motorcycle. Hey, that one easy. Let's get that in there. Down. Okay, so now we're all the way down. And he's loose too. I'm gonna stand up, get my light better. But back there, there's a bracket right there. That connects two of these bolts, so not a single washer, but just two of those. Go with those four. And then this guy should come on out. He's got the VOES attached to the back, which should be totally loose except for that connector. So I'll disconnect that real quick and pull him off. Okay, two half inch bolts. Get the back one first because it's easier. And then back on the bottom. Under here is another half inch bolt securing it to the back side for the rear exhaust. So where this guy broke out the quarter inch, it kind of follows the exhaust flange, which makes sense on the top side. On the bottom side, it's probably easier to get on the other side of the bike but, and break it loose. And then after it's loose, just use your fingers to get it off. So the exhaust is off. That guy was trying to take off, but really he just had to slide forward. So over here, you just kind of swing him forward and then slide him towards the front of the bike and he slides off that little slider. And uh, okay, so now our exhaust lists, those are torque cones. I think they're stuck on there, but they'll come loose. Uh, next thing is the manifold, intake manifold right here, which has some Allen wrenches there there and two on the back. They say you need a ball allen and uh, the wrench trick to kind of get some leverage on there. That's a VOES plug and a dangling VOES. Um, vacuum operated electronic switch. So that changes the timing as the RPMs go up. But, uh, but yeah, pull that guy off and then I can take the rocker covers off. The back side has these slots in it, so you just have to loosen these up and it'll slide out towards the other side of the bike. And on the other side of the bike, you need a ball allen to get the right angle on there. 
and to wrench to get it. But, uh, okay, so he's on there good. This is a ball Allen, but the ball is only on this end of the wrench. So, uh, down will be loosing. So let's get some leverage on there. So he is loose. Trying to get footage and also get it done. Okay, so he's loose. All right, guys, so I need a new tool for the intake, but I can get these covers off and everything but the uh, uh, cylinder heads off. Let's leverage this guy so he's loose. I got the wiring harness in the way, but I'm just going to live with it. So I want to disconnect that guy and then not be able to get him to stay as nicely as he was, if that makes sense. That one wasn't as tight. So I have one in here whenever I first got the bike a long time ago. Uh, i put new gaskets on here. The stock Harley gaskets are pretty cardboardy. Not very high quality, or aftermarket stuff is like a plastic or like a more durable material. So that guy's loose. And this guy, if I can get him in there. So he went this tight. So there's still oil in the bike. I need to drain the oil before I get the pistons off. Okay, so the bolts are loose on both covers. I did buy the Motion Pro rocker box wrench. You don't really need it, to be honest. I mean, the closest one was probably this corner, but with an Allen wrench a ball end, it wasn't too bad. Uh, I had to unscrew that guy, though, the seat mount that's where the tank hooks kind of mount up and you can see the tank was kind of rubbing against the cylinder head up there but uh the back one i got the ignition wiring kind of tucked up under there so that's kind of limiting my clearance so there's tons of oil in there doesn't look like it so i'll see when that comes up this comes up we have the rocker covers off so these rockers have springs it's probably yeah so right there you can kind of see the spring so you got to be in top dead center to uh relieve that pressure so that guy comes off pretty easy it's just a 9 16 i got the 12 point because my regular 9 16 was missed missing and there was a washer on there so same for the other side i'm sure so I got everything except for this bolt. There's two more, you can see the tops of them up under on the front. It's a 9 16 uh, My horn is kind of in the way there, but you can get it out. My horn had a loose bolt on it. It was almost falling out, so critical fastener check right there. <laughs> Thank God it had two, but uh, it was still there, so I just finger tightened it back up, but something I need to tighten up better. So this bolt, it's kind of running into the frame. I couldn't get my, my ratchety wrench on it. So I'd use just a regular uh, 916th or the other end of the ratchety wrench rather. But everything else is loose, so hopefully that should come out uh, without needing to rock the engine and the bike or something. But it does seem that it's closer on this side than the other side, but maybe that's just how they sit. Okay. So I got all my seat junk and wiring out of the way, but supposedly this lifts up and then rotates out. It's actually almost there. Hooked up in the back, rotate out. Whoa, one-handed. How about it? Oh crap, don't scratch here. Oh, there's two of them. Forgot about this guy. So, got the same story. Up. Uh, rotates out and he's already out of there all right so i managed to get that side loose but this side i need that shorter ball end allen okay so i jacked it up and it's back down now i have the front piston 
at top dead center. The way I did that was I grabbed a pen to measure my cylinders through the spark plugs and uh, got a little piece of paper, a sweet and low packet, and just set it on the spark plug, rotated the wheel in high gear to make it easier. And the plugs had to be out so you don't have compression. But uh, you rotate the wheel, it'll blow away your piece of paper and then stick the pin in there and keep going and uh, it'll go, come up a little bit. Once it stops moving up, uh, you're at, you know, top dead center. If you keep going, it'll go down and then this piston should follow it. So if you stick the pin in here and it feels pretty high and this guy will come next. So he'll be almost high, but not quite there. Okay, Duke. So, different day, uh, it's Wednesday, so six days later, I ordered this tool, intake manifold wrench from Yoast, one end is ball end, one end is normal end, so I can get that guy right there. You could cut, uh, I think it's like a quarter inch Allen, but whatever size Allen that, that is, you could cut one of your Allen wrenches stubby and then use a quarter inch wrench to loosen that. But I didn't want to cut a good Allen wrench. I don't really have any crappy ones currently. So I figure, hey, just order this wrench and I'm sure it'll come in handy at some point in the future as well. Okay. So I don't think it's actually up. No, up would be tight and left glue, so yes, that should be down. Just not wanting to go still. There he goes. Either that just stripped or I got it loose. <laughs> One or the other. I'll use the ball end. Might be easier. Okay, so he's loose now. Thank God. Thank you, good. Let's give it a shot here. It's got a wiggling on the back end already. Goes pretty loose on this. This side, the left side, looks like he's about to come out. I need to go down with it, actually. Yeah, we'll maybe this right side's still in there. Get him to cut them out. Got this wrench after all. Might as well use it. Loose to me. There we go. So he is out. Those are my intake ports. You might be able to see a valve in there. Probably pretty dirty. Uh, I don't want to flip you 180 degrees, but, but yeah, you should be able to see the valve in there. The gaskets don't actually look that bad. I mean, they're probably the original gaskets, but I got some new ones that I never put on because I didn't want to take this guy off for obvious reasons. Too much trouble, and on my luck, I'd replace it, and it wasn't broken, so it just ended up with a uh, intake leak. But okay, this concludes part one, disassembly. Part two will be engine, and I'm not sure if I'm going to do uh, reassembly. Um... But I might do a special one on the, uh, under here, there is an ignition module. So I might do one on programming the ignition module cheaply. I don't want to spend $100 on a cable. So I think I already have a cable from FTDI that'll do the same thing. But, uh, but stay tuned for that one. But, uh, thanks for watching, like and subscribe, and, uh, Disclaimer, <laughs> uh, I am not responsible if you do this to your motorcycle and have bad results. Uh, see you in the next one. Bye.